All right, so welcome to Night Hacking at the Dev Nexus conference. We are doing a live interview with Michael Manila mm -hmm. from Spring Source, and we're going to chat about, about his connected car. Yep. So um, what have you been showing at the, at the conference here? So my talk was about, uh, it was called the IoT Realize, the connected car. Um, essentially, it was a demo application that we developed, um, really using all kinds of assets with, within Pivotal but it demonstrated uh, the Internet of Things, so uh, streaming live data from a traveling car through to our server, and then we were doing some data science pieces, specifically predicting uh, where the car was going, and based on that journey, what type of mileage you would expect over that journey, specifically uh, the range you would get uh, based on the, the gas that's left in your tank. Okay, cool. So what sort of sensors did you have in the car to actually get the get the data out. So it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, every car sold in the US since 1996 has what's called an OBD2 port or onboard uh, okay. diagnostics. So you're to hooking up to the OBD port? Exactly. So you can buy a dongle nowadays for about 30 bucks on Amazon, plug that in there and you can pair up an iPhone to that. And so that's what we did. We, we've got the dongle in the car and then we wrote an iOS app that basically pulls the data, the car once a second to ask what is the current state. So what, how fast are you driving? What's the current amount of gas left in the tank, et cetera, package that up into JSON and then post that to our server. Cool, and then from the data you're pushing up to the server, you were able to do the processing of um, you know, figuring out how they're driving. What, what, what sort of like stuff could you actually figure out from the data? Could you, did you know their position? Well, probably from the phone, GPS. Exactly, so the OBD2 standard doesn't provide GPS, it doesn't provide uh, uh, see, we enrich the data on the phone with GPS, acceleration, bearing. Um, okay. Those are the main things because those aren't available via OBD2. Yeah, but those are available on the phone. Right. And then from the car itself, you were able to get like, um, you know, probably how fast it was going. Speed, RPM, uh, fuel okay. system status, uh, mass airflow readings. Um, there's a whole laundry list of, of uh data that's available. It varies from car to car. Yeah. Um, th actually, the reason we didn't have a live demo here with uh, an actual car driving around Atlanta was because the older cars in that range from 96 uh, typically don't have the full data set, and which is one of the problems with IoT in general. Yep. Um, so we couldn't, we didn't have a car easily accessible to us to be able to, that had all the data points we needed. Okay, but you, you had some sort of simulation or something you could show here exactly. for your demo. Exactly, um, we've, done, we've done it in other, in other cities. Um, okay, and um, well, all right. So we do have your computer hooked up. Is there something you could show us um, that you were working on as part of the connected car demo? Um, we're, we're chatting about, and I'm I'm putting my um, yeah, talk about putting my interviewee spot. completely <laughs> on the spot <laughs> to see what he can get hooked up on the live stream. But I've been doing a lot of um, IoT presentations and devices myself, so this is okay. really interesting to me. Okay. Um, Give me, keep, we'll keep talking. I'm going to bring up a VM uh, that I use to demo. Uh, okay. once, once that's up, we can switch to it. Yeah, so earlier in the, in the um, conference, I was showing the, um, my coffee demo, brewing coffee using a connected scale and um, thermometer and devices to get the proper Java brewing temperature. Part of my- Are you uh, a coffee aficionado? I am I'm actually do just flat out don't like coffee at all. <laughs> so I'm the opposite <laughs> end of that. Um, all right, all right. So, <laughs> and I I was in your camp <laughs> until I went to Brazil four years ago. Maybe it was five years ago. I went to um, an event in Brazil, and one of the community members, Fabian, introduced me to the best espresso I've ever had. Well, the first espresso. Now, did you like coffee at all before you? No, went? I hated it. It's, it's bitter and disgusting. Exactly, and it tastes it. burnt to me. Yeah, no, well, all U.S. coffee tastes burnt. That is, <laughs> that is a, a feature. But all right, so I, I'll leave you with this. Maybe you haven't had the right <laughs> coffee. Fair enough. Um, yeah, so we had our coffee demo, um, 3D printer, so we could print out some cases. That's a really cool way of doing some um, enabled demos. And you actually, you have something cool on your screen. I should probably be showing your screen. <laughs> so let me just Rather go full screen us. for a second. Oops. There we go. So this is the dashboard uh, for our connected car application that we, that we built. So as data is streaming in from the car, we're uh, processing it, we're storing it in HDFS, 
Um, and then we're also piping it out to Gemfire, uh, wh which powers this dashboard via uh, Spring Rest services. And so obviously you've got the map that shows the location of the car. Um, and then we've got along the right, we've got uh, the speed, the RPMs, uh, the, the temperature or the, co the coolant temperature of the car, as well as the amount of fuel that's left in the, car, in the uh, tank. And then this is the more interesting view. This is the actual data science piece. So each one of these points is a potential endpoint of where the guy could be driving. Interesting. Based on historical data. So as they're driving, we actively try and predict where they're going. So in this case, uh, we predicted with 100% accuracy that he was going to number one, and what do you know, he did. Um, but so as he's driving, these numbers will be bouncing around until, based on historical data, we figure out where he's going. Um, and then based on that uh, prediction of where he's going and how much t gas is left in the tank, we can figure uh, out okay. how, how much of a range he has. And it's a much more accurate range prediction than what you'd see in a typical car right now. For the yeah. example, if um, we, we've got a field engineer that has that does a lot of work in Chicago, but then has a vacation house in Michigan. If he drives to Michigan, he's going to spend about an hour or 45 minutes in city traffic before he gets free of the highway. So if he wants to see whether or not he can make it to the cheap gas in Michigan, yeah, he needs so a much more accurate range prediction. So you actually you can you can predict where they're going and therefore you can actually do really accurate fuel mileage because you know what the traffic conditions or the speed he'll be traveling at exactly based exactly. on um, the destination exactly and obviously this isn't quite as big of a deal with um, with gas cars because there's gas stations everywhere yeah but electric but exactly yeah. the, the electric world this is a huge deal cool okay where do I get a car where I can use this in. <laughs> well, you buy a dongle and uh, buy a we'll dongle. We'll be, open, sor we'll be re open sourcing this code. Fairly uh, recent ca car, like 2000 or later, is probably fine. Oh yeah, yeah. cool. So Very awesome. Um, um, so, what other sort of stuff have you been doing with Spring Batch or Spring XD? That's interesting. So this is obviously uh, our server piece of this is is built on Spring XD. So we have a stream that does the ingestion, uh, yeah. and then there's also a batch process that that runs to basically train the data science model that uh, is involved in this real-time analytics. Um, beyond that, uh, just been updated, be working on the, the, the pair of frameworks, so uh, both Spring Batch um, as well as Spring XD when I can. Cool, so. cool, excellent. So um, thanks for walking us through the, the car demo and taking some time out to do a, a short interview, and I, I hope you enjoy your, the rest of the conference here. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you.